Hi, I'm Warren Moon. And I'm Malik Rashid. Don't forget to watch the Fight for Life show. That's right, so you can learn to become a champion for life also. Hello, I'm Malik Rashid, your host, and welcome to another segment of the Fight for Life show. The show is dedicated to education, health, safety, and more importantly, improving the quality of life in the community. We are very fortunate to have with us in the studio today a very distinguished guest. Uh, you all know him. He's none other than Warren Moon, quarterback of the Houston Oilers. Warren, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Uh, Warren, let's get right to it. I know you're busy. I know you have a lot of things that need to be you need to take care of. Let's get right to it. Uh, let's back up and go to your career uh, when your football career started uh, back in Los Angeles, California. How old were you when you actually started playing football? Well, I actually started playing organized football when I was 10 years old. I started playing in an organization called the Pop Warner Football League, and I started at 10. I played there for four years before I went on to high school and then on to college. Okay, we know as a professional and as a, on a collegiate level you've done some phenomenal things. What did you do outstanding as a, as a, a little league football player? Well, I played on, uh, out of those four years, I played on three championship teams in the in Los Angeles area. Um, I was the most valuable player on my team two of those years. And I uh, just had a whole lot of fun when I was a, a younger kid. I, I played all different sports, not just football. I played baseball. got a lot of honors in baseball and, and also in basketball. And was real fortunate to play with some really talented guys at a young age. Uh, guys like James Lofton played with me on my Pop Warner team. Uh, Wendell Tyler, running back for the Rams. Butcher Johnson, a receiver for the, for the Dallas Cowboys. So I was uh, surrounded by great athletes at a young age. So therefore, you had pretty good uh, 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 tutorship. I mean, you've been tutored well, you were schooled well, and you were uh, able to receive a lot of good, a lot of strong encouragement, a lot of good advice from some guys that are credible and have been done phenomenal things in the league also, and doing, still doing wonderful things. Exactly, and the guys that coached us were uh, policemen in the Los Angeles area from the Los Angeles Police Department. They would coach us um, in their spare time, and they coached us like it was going through the police academy. I mean, we really got drilled like they got drilled in the police academy. And they really taught us a lot of discipline, too, at a very young age. And it's something I think that was really good. And it gave us a good relationship between uh, being on the streets and, and knowing what the police was all about. So I guess that's where you get a great, you received a great deal of your poise and the, the uh, composure that you <laughs> exemplify now. Well, I hope so. I think a lot of that comes from that and also my mom. You know, she's a very uh, poised person. and. Uh, she really uh, did a great job of raising us under the circumstances, and I think watching her, the way she handled the whole situation, I think that kind of rubbed off on me. Is that right? I was reading an article by a gentleman who works for the Houston Chronicle named Terry Blind. He wrote a very interesting article on you. And one of the things that he brought, he said, at a young age, your father passed, right. and basically you were like the man of the house uh, thereafter. Could you elaborate and smile on that one? Well, when I was eight years, seven years old, my father passed away, and uh, my mother pulled me to the side and gave me a talk, and she told me that... Uh, I was now the man of the house and a lot of my responsibilities were going to have to change as far as making sure the house was locked up at night, making sure things that he used to do, I now had to do as far as, uh, you know, making sure the lawn was cut, just all kind of different responsibilities. So I took all that upon myself at a very young age and uh, probably grew up a little bit faster than maybe I should have, but that's all right. I think I've paid off. it's paid off for me later on in life. Oh, well, sure it has. Also, it was another incident that that, that transpired early in your life, and, and I, we also understand, from what we understand, it propelled you and kind of inspired you to go on to do greater things and do things the right way. And that is when you were a child of 14 years old, I think you had a little incident where you stole a cookie or you stole something out of the store. Could you expound on that and show other youth how that inspired you and why it's so important to do the right thing and move in a positive and straight direction? Exactly. When I was uh, 14 years old, I was with two buddies of mine, and. Uh, we were in a drugstore one day after football practice and we were just kind of wandering through the store and we were in the sporting goods department. And all of a sudden I decided, or they decided to uh, take some headbands and they put them down inside their pants. So I went ahead and did the same thing. I stuck it down inside my pants and we tried to get out of the store. They ran away and I got caught. And uh, you know, I was very humiliated, really embarrassed because I got handcuffed in front of the store and uh, they called my mother down and, and the, um, the the face, facial expression that she showed when she walked in that store just really showed me the hurt that, uh, that I, I had put on her and all the things that she had done for me, for me to let her down that way, it really made me see that uh, you know, I did do the wrong thing and the fortunate thing was that the, the store manager didn't press charges against me, he gave me a second chance and when I got that second chance I made the most of it, I made sure I would never do anything like that again. And, uh, you have to take advantage of those second chances because you, 
a lot of times don't get them. That's true. Well, well, you're doing a great job. And not only that, but from then on, it seems like you, you just set examples. You've been an excellent role model. You went on to play collegiate ball at Washington. And we understand, from what we understand, when you left Washington, you had to go to, was that where you went to junior college? Or could you expound on that? Well, Tell us about that. That's a, that's a very interesting story. Coming out of uh, high school, I wasn't really recruited highly by the big schools to play quarterback. Everyone didn't think I had what it took to play quarterback. They wanted to change my position, as do they want to do that to a lot of young black quarterbacks. And I was determined to play quarterback at a big school. So I went to a junior college for one year just to prove myself just a little bit more that I could play the position. And uh, won all the state honors uh, as a quarterback for junior college and then the big schools started coming and recruiting me and uh, I went on to the University of Washington and had a good career there. And you led them to the Rose Bowl, am I correct? Exactly. And you were the MVP. Right. Uh, I tell you, it's, it's amazing. Uh, not only that, but you had difficult problems trying to make the transition from collegiate ball to the pros. What happened, Warren? Why did you actually have to go to the Canadian League, Football League? Well, when I was coming out of school, um, they weren't knocking my door down as far as giving me opportunities to play in the National Football League. So my attorney and I sat down and uh, just kind of went over my options. And the Canadian Football League was making me a great offer to come up there and play early in my career. That was something that really attracted me. And I decided since the NFL wasn't going to make me a high round draft pick that I would go up to Canada and play for a while and, and kind of prove myself again and see what happens. And uh, it worked out well for me. It sure did. You, you took them, you won five Greek. Great Cup championships, am I correct? And you also threw for, what, 5,600 yards in your last season? Am I correct? And do you think that's what made the big difference? After you went to the Canadian Football League, after you sat and broke all the records, you took them to five Great Cup championships, you think that's when they really began to recognize Warren Moon and say, hey, this guy is not a brute, he has a brain? I think so. I think just looking at the, the success that I had as far as the winning and also what I was doing individually, I think that helped my chances. And also they looked at... Um, you know, the ability that you have. They looked that I had a strong arm and the things that I could do on the move, and uh, uh, I think that made it attractive as far as me being a quarterback in this league, something that they didn't really see in college because I didn't throw the ball a whole lot in college. You know, you, you had to be a pretty sharp guy to go to uh, Washington, and you had a pretty high GPA. What was your GPA there? It was 275. Is that right? Yeah. What was your favorite subject? Well, I was a communications major, and that, that was something that uh, really intrigued me because you're always around the media being in sports. So it's kind of natural that you would um, be around the media all the time and maybe make the transition over into working in the media when you got done. So I majored in communications. So, and, I, and from what we understand, you're getting ready to, uh, you're looking forward to a career in broadcasting now. Am I correct? You're preparing for that right now? Kind of preparing for it. You know, I have a weekly TV show here and a weekly radio show, and I've been doing that for a couple of years now. And uh, really having a lot of fun doing it and getting a little bit better each time. Yeah, well, you know, one another thing, let's back up a little bit and talk about you growing up in the Los Angeles area. Also, another quarterback uh, was drafted above Stabler. That's what happens to be my distant cousin, Eldridge Dickey. Uh, when I was coming up, Eldridge Dickey, a guy by the name of Jeffrey Allen and Bob Ayers were the only football players I knew. I played football, Little League football for the YMCA. As a matter of fact, I was a quarterback for a small to Little League team called the CUNY Home Rattlers. And he was the only guy we knew. You know, did you he ever hear about Elgis Dickey? Yeah, I did. Uh, didn't hear a whole lot about him, but I knew the name. Uh, I was more familiar with uh, James Harris, the quarterback for the Rams at the time when uh, I was growing up in Los Angeles, and he was kind of one of my role, role models because there wasn't a whole lot of black quarterbacks to look at it and say, well, hey, I've got a chance to make it in this league. But as uh, I got a little bit older, more of them got opportunities like Joe Gilliam and uh, Joe Walton and guys like that. And, uh, you know, that made me see that I could get up there to that level if um, if I just did the things that it took to get there, the hard work, the dedication, and, and not getting uh, disenchanted by people telling you you can't do it, you know, because people are going to tell you along the way that you can't do things, but you have to have confidence in your abilities. That's true. We all can see it didn't make you better. It made you better. It does. And I tell you, like I said, you were really accepting great examples for youth because I have to be honest with you, I became disenchanted. I said, oh, I'll never be, uh, become a, a, a superstar, not as a black uh, quarterback, because I watched and I witnessed what happened to my cousin, Eldridge Dickey. I remember many times I would sit back and wait, watch on television. I was waiting for him to get in the game. When he got there, they made a wide receiver out of him. He never got in the game. It just to bring tears to my eyes. But Warren, to see you doing the things that you are doing today, I think you're a shining example uh, of what an individual could do if he uh, remains determined, if he works hard, if he's willing to overcome the adversity and obstacles and barriers that are confronted that he's confronted with 
And also, we also know that you're involved in a, other, a lot of other things, a lot of humanitarian endeavors that make Warren Moon so special. Could you expound on the Crescent Moon Foundation? A lot of people are, uh, have heard a lot about it, and they want to know more about it and the great work that you're doing in the community in terms of saving lives and making a difference in the lives of people, not only in the city of Houston, but around the world. Well, got about a minute left, guys. The, uh, the Crescent Moon Foundation is something that I started about uh, a year and a half ago, and it, Basically, I established it because I wanted to do a lot of different programs on my own as far as raising money for uh, different youth groups and different charities around the city of Houston. Um, I worked with a lot of charities for a lot of years well, when I first got here, but I just wanted to do some things on my own. So I started the foundation, and we've been fundraising now for, like I said, the last year and a half, and we've been able to do a lot of good things for a lot of different organizations around the city, mainly uh, concentrating on youth because you the youth is so important for uh, for the growth of this city and the growth of this nation. And if we don't take care of our youth, uh, our country is going to be in a lot of trouble. I agree with you, Warren. You're doing a fantastic job. We want you to keep it to work, work and want to thank you for coming on, having right. the patience and the concern, and being concerned enough to come on the Fight for Life show and share your experiences with the people out there. And on behalf of Warren Moon and the Fight for Life program, we would like to encourage you all to always remember that outrage is not as great as outreach. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me.